Do you give me a beer? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go send my top list real quick here. Sorry. Oh, here you go. Hang on a second. So I don't know if anybody has noticed Neil's socks, but um, come come over here. Just check these out. Check these out. What do you have to say about your socks? Mooch four. You got a pair too, didn't you? I do. I, I'm not wearing them now, but they have sea turtles on them. My pair. These have um, palm trees. Yeah. So anyway, just thought I'd point that out. I'm going to just connect a few dots here. Um, what has what united us and all, all of the people who have spoken, friends and colleagues, uh, is that we love it here. We love this town. We love living by the ocean. It defines um, our lives, plain and simple, from the beginning to the end. We are ocean-loving people. And that is, I'm a scientist, I'm a marine biologist, and as a, a kid, I fell in love with the ocean. I fell in love with the way I felt in the water, and I decided that I was either gonna be a pro surfer or a marine biologist. And the first option was pretty much quickly off the table um, immediately. And so then my dad said, well, Jacques Cousteau already has that second job. Basically, that was, the worldview back then. There, there wasn't any more room. But I followed my passion for sea turtles and became a sea turtle biologist. And one of the first things we did is we put a satellite transmitter on a sea turtle named Adelita. And we tracked her from Baja California, Mexico, all the way home to Japan, 7,000 miles. That was 1996. That was the first animal ever tracked across an entire ocean. It was a sea turtle named Adelita. We named her after the daughter of the fisherman who helped us attach the transmitter to her shell. Now she's in her 20s, but she was a little kid back then. And what I learned from that turtle was a lot of stuff. One thing I learned was persistence. Another thing I learned was to swim through walls. She had been in captivity for 10 years. She was released. When we released her, she swam about the diameter of this room, which was the size of her tank, paused as if to say, there should be a wall here. Normally I would be hitting my head on a wall. After pausing, she began to swim, swim again and she did not stop until she reached home. 7,000 miles across the North Pacific Ocean, 368 days later. First animal ever tracked across an ocean. The other thing she taught us was about a, a region now known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Back in 1996, very few people were talking about plastic pollution in the ocean. Very, very few. It was not a topic that, it's not, wasn't the topic that it is today. Now, we've just heard from, well, half dozen individuals who are work, global leaders on this issue. Santa Cruz is an epicenter for leadership on plastic pollution, and that's just a fact. We live in this very special place where people love the ocean, but we do something about it. We turn love into action. And so that's another thing I learned from this turtle, was to care about plastic pollution in the ocean. So I've been involved in that for about 20 years. But the other thing I learned was that all the people who were tracking this turtle online, we shared the data online and literally millions of kids and teachers and biologists, scientists around the world were following Adelita across the ocean. I learned that that emotional connection to an individual turtle really compelled people, it really helped held their attention. I became curious as a scientist about what is it about water that pulls us in, holds us in its net of wonder, as Jacques Cousteau would say, and helps us fall in love and become unstoppable ocean warriors. What is that? And so I went looking for a book about the neuroscience, the neuropsychology of our connection with water. I figured there would be one because there are books about our brain on music there are books about um, our brain on stress, our brain on happiness, our brain's ability to change itself, our brain on creativity. And I, you know, I'm joking, but there probably was even a book about our brain on bacon or our brain on bowling. But there's research about our brain on red wine and chocolate. I figured there's gotta be a great book about our brain on water, the single biggest, most important feature of our little planet. And I couldn't find one, so I tried to get the late, great Oliver Sacks to write a book about our brain on water because he loves water. He was a water man. He swam almost every day. He was in love with the water. Said he got his best ideas in the water. That's what he said. 
And when I pitched the idea to him, he said, if you've heard Oliver Sacks speak, you know the sort of depth and strength of his intellect. And he said, that's a fine idea. You do it. <laughs> I said, oh shit, I think I better do this. So I wrote this book, Blue Mind, and there's a few around. We're selling them and we're giving the money to Dan for a Neil C. Odyssey tonight. So there's a couple of them right there if you, if you need a copy about our brain on water. And basically the upshot is that the ocean is not only an economic engine. It is not only the single biggest ecological feature of our planet and home to the majority of biodiversity. It is not only source of over half of our oxygen. It is not only covering 71% of our planet. It is also the source of romance, peace, a sense of freedom. It's the place we go after the end of a long day or a bad week or a crap year, as the case may be. I won't go political, but uh, if you feel a lot of red mind, which is distraction and aggravation, you go to the water. It's a, it's a sink for our stress. It's, it's a place we take our anxiety. It's the place we take our children to connect with them. It's the place we mourn the loss of our loved ones. But we don't communicate any of that very well when it comes to um, teaching our kids in school or teaching our kids in aquariums and science centers or teaching them in textbooks or teaching each other. And so that's why I wrote that book, to kind of break the ice and say the science of emotion is important, the ocean makes life possible, and it makes life worth living. And that is the theme that unites all of the people you've heard from tonight. That is the theme of this building. That is the reason why we have a National Marine Sanctuary. All, it's to protect the ecological integrity, the economic future, to educate, but to also protect the massive emotional benefits that we all derive here in Santa Cruz, living at the edge of the Pacific Ocean. So that's really my message, and I have one more thing to say, which is pull out your blue marble. <laughs> And if you need one, uh, raise your hand. I'll get you one because I've got a um, bag of them here. And if you pull out your blue marble, if you need one, need one, need one, need one, need one, need one. Got one, need one. I'll take one today. I've got plenty. Yes. <laughs> right. Hold out your blue marble and hold it at arm's length. That is what we look like from a million miles away. I did the math. You may need to adjust depending on the length of your forearm, but it's based on my forearm length. By the way, these marbles are made of recycled glass by Marble King in West Virginia. Just in case you're wondering, since we've been talking about sort of materials tonight. Yeah, in case you're wondering. That's what we look like from a million miles away. We are small and blue, which is a reminder that every single thing we do on this little blue planet matters the good things, the bad things, the things we get right, the things we get wrong. It's a reminder that we do nothing alone. Getting here tonight, putting on this shirt, I probably had a thousand helpers. They're nameless, I don't know who they are, but they made this shirt and they got it to me and I bought it. And I, I put it on my body myself, but somebody made these buttons and somebody made this thread and somebody made this blue dye. Everything we do, we do together. Nobody does anything alone. And one more thing, it's blue. Why is it blue? The water. We are a water-based planet. Turns out that's pretty rare in our universe, pretty special. So you thought it was just a blue marble, but it's a, a triple lesson that you can put in your pocket. And my ask is that you take your blue marble and you pass it on to somebody. And you say thank you to them for whatever it is that they're doing to make this place, our little tiny blue marble home, a little better. Tell, embellish the story. Tell them your version of this conversation we've had here tonight. And then tell them that their homework is to pass on the blue marble to someone they want to say thank you to. So to date, we've shared over a million of these. Some of you have already gotten one, or maybe three, or five, or a dozen, because we see each other regularly, and I have this habit of giving out blue marbles. <laughs> and hopefully you've passed them on. But the Dalai Lama got one. 
the Pope got one because that's the way we roll. We're kind of <laughs> ecumenical and cool like that. Because, you know, why not? Jane Goodall got one. James Cameron got one. Harrison Ford got one. Jack Johnson, Jack Johnson got one. And guess who he passed it to? He gave it to the man who taught him to play guitar. That's like, that's awesome. Right? It was a beautiful moment. A man named Pef. Can we get one to drum? Yes, you can. <laughs> If you'd like, which drum? Actually, which one? Which drum? The young Baron Trump? I think that would be great. Yes. So that is my, that is it. That's my message. Let's bring the emotion to everything we do. Don't be shy about emotion. There is a science of emotion that has your back if if you need it. If you're feeling like, oh, I'm a serious person. I'm a um, I'm not an emotional person. Screw that. Like this is personal. Bring the emotion. If you need the PDF of the peer review literature that backs you up, call me. I will send it to you. Um, the last thing, I, I'll, just, I'll just underline that. Coca-Cola has a neuroscience lab that helps them sell sugar water. Why do you think they have a neuroscience lab in-house? Because it works. We need to use neuroscience and psychology to help us promote our work, our protection of the blue parts of the planet, our protection of the green parts. If we aren't doing that, if there's not a sign on the wall as you walk in to an aquarium that explains that, we're slowly falling behind. And that's really been the case. So let's bring it, let's bring it hard, let's bring the science, let's bring the passion and the emotion, and let's share these blue marbles all over. And let's be really thankful for places like this, nights like this, centers like this that allow groups like this to convene and share our passion for the ocean and for each other. So excellent, excellent night. Thanks, Neil. Great job, MC.